Howdy, and welcome back to class. Last week, we broke down the basics of the game, covering, game modes, and the KSC. This week, we're going to have a look at launch profiles, specifically how to achieve the most effective and efficient launch profiles. While the ideal launch profile will vary from design to design, the variations are very small in all but the most awkward designs. For this lesson, I created a single stage to orbit, or SSTO, that had roughly 4,000 meters per second of delta V in order to do most of my testing with. For reference, if you have a perfect launch profile, it takes just shy of 3,300 meters per second of delta V to reach an orbit of 80 kilometers. So I built in some extra fuel for when I waste it all doing testing. This craft file will be posted to Kerbal X and sent in for your use and convenience. Please know that mods can make this more or less difficult. FAR makes rocket launches easier due to more accurate aerodynamics modeling while Real Solar System mod makes it harder because it scales up the planets to match our solar system more accurately. If you find old tutorials and watch them on YouTube, most of them will say go straight up at full throttle until you hit 10 kilometers, then turn 45 degrees to the east and watch your apwaps until you hit your desired altitude. At the time, that was the best way to do it since the atmosphere didn't get thinner until you hit 10 kilometers, or properly factor aerodynamic drag. Now, however, the game has a more proper atmosphere that thins gradually as you rise and more accurate aerodynamics so your rocket will induce proper amounts of drag at high speed. This means that both parts of the old system are inefficient. The vertical launch and full throttle idea both waste potential speed and fuel. Allow me to explain. When launching strictly vertical, you are being wasteful in two ways. The first is that you're spending more fuel than necessary to fight gravity. While you do need to overcome gravitational pull to reach orbit, burning straight up is only dealing with half the problem. Horizontal speed is what allows you to ultimately defeat Kerbin's hold on you, as an orbit is simply your craft moving fast enough for gravity to pull you around the planet rather than down to it. So, in launching straight up, you aren't putting your fuel to its full use, since it can multitask by sending you both vertically and horizontally at the same time. The second way you waste fuel burning straight up is that you're sacrificing the boost the planet Kerbin itself gives you. As Kerbin rotates, it adds its velocity to yours. The closer you are to the ground, the more of the boost the planet gives you. So burning straight up means that you're sacrificing much more of the planet's natural rotational force, meaning you'll need more fuel to circularize in orbit once you get up into space. The final way you may waste fuel is by burning full throttle. I say may because this point is dependent on your rocket's design. Your vessel's terminal velocity and thrust to weight ratio, or TWR for short, are the two things that will determine that. If your TWR is over 2, you can almost guarantee that full throttle is a bad idea, as you'll most likely be hitting and exceeding your terminal velocity. Terminal velocity itself is basically the maximum speed at a given altitude that you can go while maintaining peak efficiency. If you exceed your terminal velocity, then you're wasting fuel to push your craft forward faster as the aerodynamic forces are starting to build up and push back harder on your craft. Terminal velocity does increase as the craft gains altitude since the atmosphere thins as you rise. For experienced players, finding these pieces of information is as easy as some complex math equations or looking at those figures in Kerbal Engineer. For new players, or those who don't wish to use mods or do math, I can give you some tips to figure it out. For TWR, you want your craft to accelerate at roughly 1.5 to 2 times the strength of gravity. Gravity on Kerbin is pulling you down at 9.8 meters per second, so you want to be accelerating upwards at between 15 and 20 meters per second. Remember, the planet's gravity will subtract its 9.8 from you, so your relative acceleration will be between 5 and 10 meters per second. I realize that may seem complicated at first, but launch a vessel and watch your initial speed. If it looks like you're going up at a rate of between 5 and 10 meters per second, then you're right at the sweet spot. You don't need to be exact, as it quickly will speed up as your altitude rises, but keeping it close will help you keep your efficiency up. For terminal velocity, there's a rule of thumb. One Mach number per 10 kilometers of vertical altitude. Each Mach number is roughly 300 meters per second. So at 10 kilometers, be traveling as close to 300 meters per second as possible. At 20 kilometers, be as close to 600 meters per second as possible at 30, 900, and so on and so forth until you hit 70 kilometers, at which point the atmosphere no longer has any impact on you. You can now go as fast or slow as you want and you will maintain perfect efficiency. Now, all of that information is helpful and can be used to help you find the right launch profile for your specific vessel, but what about if you're a real beginner and you just want a path to follow until you get the hang of it? Well, I've got you covered there too. After a lot of testing, some on stream and some off, I went through about a dozen different launch profiles to find the best one and actually came up with two possibilities. The easiest and third most efficient solution I found is actually my own standardized launch profile. Upon launching, you almost immediately turn five degrees to the east, which is to the right if you leave your rocket in the default position in the vehicle assembly building. Then follow the Procrade marker, which is the yellow marker with the dot in the middle, not the X. 
If you're pointing toward the X, you're thrusting at the ground and will not go to space today. Check the map periodically to see where your apoapse is, and once that marker is at the desired altitude, cut your thrusters and ride your momentum up. Then circularize your orbit once you get into space. The most efficient solution was presented to me by Unknown Spaceman. Launch vertically until your craft speed reaches 200 meters per second. Once you hit that speed, perform a gravity turn, which is what makes this method more difficult. In case you don't know, a gravity turn is when you allow a body, Kerbin in this case, to naturally pull your craft downward. It keeps your craft following the prograde marker on its own, but if you have your TWR too low, then it will pull you all the way back to the planet. Doing a gravity turn also means that you aren't using SAS. If your design is not aerodynamically stable, then it will lose control and crash. Making stable rockets can be difficult even for veteran players, as we're all quite used to using SAS to save us from horrible crashes. But I digress. While your craft is performing the gravity turn, watch your Apple apps on the map screen again. Once it hits the desired altitude, kill your thrusters and ride your momentum up again, then circularize as normal. As I said before, it takes roughly 3300 meters per second of delta V to get into orbit around Kerbin. If you did it perfectly, my method takes about 3500 meters per second of delta V to reach an 80 kilometer orbit, while Spaceman's takes about 3350 to reach the same orbit. Just to contrast these methods with how efficient they are compared to the old method, the old launch method of 10 kilometers vertical, then turning 45 degrees, required me to use almost 3,800 meters per second of delta V. The only method that I tested which was more inefficient than this was to go straight up to your desired height and then circularize. This method takes more than 4,000 meters per second of delta V because I ran out of fuel and crashed back into carbon. So in conclusion, Unknown Spaceman, congratulations on having the most perfect launch profile. I'll be sure to put a star by your name on a board or something. In the next Kerbal 101, we take a look at the VAB and SPH and answer the question, what in the world are all those buttons and tabs for and how do I use them? If you like, you can follow me on Twitter at JMA4707. You can watch my streams on twitch.tv slash jarthur4707 or subscribe to my YouTube channel, Gaming Psychologist. Until next time, Jay Arthur, signing off.